Now for more, I'm joined by Eugene Chalzowski, who is a geopolitical analyst. Eugene, thank you again for joining us. If you could just start by giving us a little bit of context here, a bit of background. We've obviously just seen and heard about VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, celebrated today in much of Europe. Why does Russia celebrate on the 9th when the rest of the world, world celebrates on the 8th? Well, for Russia, I think it's a matter of pride and patriotism that, you know, from the Russian perspective, it was really the Soviet Union that delivered the final victory against Nazi Germany. Obviously, the Allies were very important, but really Russia feels like it was the one uh, that really d uh, nailed down that decisive victory. So they have, you know, this uh, celebration on the 9th really to, to display that uh, patriotism and really Russia as a unique uh, player in that war and on the global stage currently. Now, some Russians believe that Putin has been using May the 9th as a way of reading Russian people or preparing Russian people for a real war, as in, you know, something that would be declared by Russia as a war. What do you say to the idea that the memory of World War II shouldn't be used to galvanize support for the conflict in Ukraine? Well, clearly that is what the Russian administration under Vladimir Putin is doing. And I think that really explains a lot of the actions that we've seen, uh, as your segment previously mentioned, uh, in, in Mariupol and in Donbass, because really Russia wants to demonstrate some kind of major victory or at least major progress that it can sell to the Russian people, uh, even as they've experienced setbacks and some challenges elsewhere throughout the country. And in terms of the anticipation that Putin may officially declare a war or call for a mass mobilization of the Russian public during the celebration, do you have any comments to that? Well, the Russian leadership has denied that. Uh, it's difficult to say because they've denied other things in, in the lead up to the Ukrainian invasion as well. So that, that remains to be seen. But I think in terms of you know, declaring a mass mobilization or, or calling this you know, an official war. I mean, that's, you know, what we're currently seeing, even if, as Russia uses, uh, you know, the special military operations. So I don't know if it will change much on the ground. As we're seeing, you know, Russia is ramping up its activities in eastern Ukraine, even as, um, you know, it has removed forces in other parts of the country. So I, I doubt that it's going to be a major change on the ground, but really a continuation, perhaps escalation of what we've seen up until this point. Now, the, the big fear is what might Russia do as far as marking this celebration in the form of their perhaps biggest and boldest attack yet? Should Ukraine and the world be on edge in the way that they are? Well, certainly there should be concern over, you know, ongoing Russian military actions. As far as a major display, uh, I think that would probably be limited to Donbass, which is where we've seen, you know, operations going on currently. Uh, and I think there's concern from both sides, rightfully so, of the potential for some kind of spillover. We've seen ongoing and increased Western support, especially from the U.S., uh, for the Ukrainian military, just as Russia has, you know, increased its focus on Donbass. So in that sense, I think both sides do want to prevent the spillover in terms of direct Russia-NATO confrontation. Uh, but at the same time, the longer this goes on, you know, there can be miscalculations and that is a, a possibility, although, as I said, I think both sides want to avoid that as much as possible. Eugene, really appreciate your insight today. Thank you very much. Eugene Chalzowski, the geopolitical analyst. Still ahead, 